One last hope. The desperate search for a missing submarine enters its most critical hours tonight. If the sub is still intact, the five-man crew has a very limited amount of oxygen left. Now, here's what we know right now. The Coast Guard bringing in more vessels to help with the search, which was on its way to view the wreckage in the Titanic of the Titanic off the coast of Newfoundland. The oxygen is calculated to run out sometime tomorrow morning, and today, crews insisted that this is still very much a rescue operation and a glimmer of hope. Last night, a Canadian patrol plane detected some underwater noises. Noises were heard by a Canadian P3, and that was this morning and some yesterday. But I don't, I can't tell you what the noises are. But what I can tell you is, and I think this is the most important point, we're searching where the noises are. Family and friends of the crew, as well as fellow explorers, are holding out hope for an 11th hour miracle. It's really hard for me to imagine what's going through their minds. Obviously, Stockton, the CEO and pilot, was very confident or he wouldn't go down on almost every dive, and his confidence kind of uh, spread to all of us, too. That's a man who has been there, a North Suburban adventurer who was on the Titan for a previous trip down to the Titanic. And he just talked to Casey Cronus about his experience. Casey, this must be just surreal for him to watch. Corey and Don, it was just two summers ago that David Wad was sitting where those five missing travelers are now. He had tried to make the journey for years, but it didn't pan out until he found Ocean Gate and says he took the dive the very first summer they made it available. I did not have the least bit worry when I was in that that submersible for between 10 and 11 hours. David Wad is recounting his time, more than 12,500 feet below sea level. We actually ended up at the stern rather than the bow, which was disappointing, but the stern is a mangled piece of metal, but it's still pretty neat to go over and it hasn't been filmed very much. The Lake Forest man ventured to the Titanic's debris field in 2021 on the very submersible that crews are now frantically searching for. Once you're down there, it's, it's pretty simple going around. Frontward, backward, a little bit up, a little bit down. And then when you're ready to go back to the top, you drop some weights. And up you go again, about two and a half hours to get back to the top. For years, the former teacher and avid scuba diver dreamed of making the underwater journey and ultimately described it as smooth sailing. Then they have a very sophisticated communication system to communicate with the, the team up at the surface on the support boat. You do not have GPS underwater. So they had to tell us where to go to find the stern when we landed in the debris field. Wad says some worst case scenarios were reviewed before plunging into the depths of the ocean, including what to do if there was a fire on board or if Stockton Rush, the pilot, passed out. But the idea of not resurfacing wasn't on his radar. And obviously I wouldn't have been recommending that to my friends if, if I felt any uh, 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 problems with it at the time and any hesitancy. So I certainly didn't then. Now, knowing what I know, I don't think I would have gone. Wad says he was so enthusiastic about the expedition that he even invited Ocean Gate, who brought the Titanic to Lake Forest that same year and had community members check out the inside of that submersible. He says his thoughts are with the passengers on board and their loved ones. Reporting live from DuSable Harbor, Casey Cronus, Fox 32, Chicago.